What is good everybody? Today we are back with another ranking style video for you guys and this is a very interesting one because usually we're ranking WWE action figures ourselves, right? And I could do that but I, I want to save that to the end of the year. So I figured today would be a fun one because we can do it by set. I'm going to take every mainline WWE Elite set. There's six of them and I'm going to rank them from worst to best and explain my thoughts on them, why they're good, why they're bad, all those different stuff. I feel like we get a lot of quality in the main Elite lines. Nowadays there's usually some sort of throwback talent. There's some sort of development mental talent, whether it be NXT or what have you. And then we do have some main stars in there thrown in. Sometimes we get, you know, some first time in the line. Sometimes we don't. But today we're going to dive into the sets, man. This is going to be ranking every WWE Elite set from 2024 so far, from worst to best. And it should be fun, man. We're going to dive into it. And also, we do have an ad read in a little bit. We're going to talk about our upcoming whatnot stream that should be extremely awesome. Can't wait for you guys to see that. But nonetheless, man, let's dive into our countdown. So we have six different sets here up to date that we're going to be ranking. And I can't wait for, to do so. And I don't have Elite 113 in here. I was going to wait until, you know, the end of the year. This will probably be our last WWE figure ranking video until the end of the year, just because we'll have every single figure in hand. We can diagnose it. But nonetheless, man, let's dive into the countdown. Starting out at number six, the worst mainline WWE Elite set so far this year is Elite 108. And I think you may be able to see this on the on the horizon. You could have been seeing this coming our way. But Elite 108, man, this set right here kind of disappointed the hell out of me. It was very depressing to look at. So running down the set, we have Chelsea Green, Bronson Reed, LA Knight, Brock Lesnar, Omos, and Terry Gordy. Now let's get into some of the highlights of the set. The highlights of the set, Terry Gordy being a two-in-one with the Executioner. Very cool figure right there. I know that we got the UW WF Championship with Big Bubba Rogers in the Legends line, which was cool to pair with that figure and do some different things there. But outside of that, everything else in this set, it's not that it's, I, I don't know, you, you'll, you'll understand as I kind of go through it, but the rest of the set is kind of meh, and outside of a few things, like the Omos figure had newly sculpted arms, which I'm a fan of. I did like the Bronson Reed figure with the duster and everything, but running through the set, I thought that the Chelsea Green figure was good, but the head sculpt kind of lacked in identity. I didn't really care for the Chelsea Green head sculpt. The Bronson Reed figure, while it was good. I felt like it was just a repaint of his other figure, and it just didn't add a whole lot of life, which I know we get repaints all the time, but it was pretty much the exact same figure, and it wasn't, I, I didn't really care for the attire that much on that one personally. I preferred his first figure. LA Knight, we know the head sculpt was terrible. Not a good head sculpt, and that kind of ruined the figure in, in, in some ways, and I wasn't a big fan of the formula. I thought they could have made some different choices there for LA Knight's figure. Brock Lesnar, it's Honeycomb Mouth Brock Lesnar. We know the lore on Honeycomb Mouth Brock Lesnar, and it was like the same exact elite Brock Lesnar we've gotten the last three or four times, and nothing changed but the honeycomb mouth, so it was like, what the hell is even that? And then lastly, like we touched on, the Omos figure, I just, uh, I don't think this was necessarily needed. I felt like his first figure was plenty good, but at the same time, it's not a bad figure. It just, it didn't move the needle that much. I just thought that at the end of the day, the Omos figure wasn't necessarily needed. Coming into number five. Number five, I have Elite 107. This is the set that came before Elite 108, obviously, if you're following chronological numerical order. So, on Elite 107, this set was not the worst of all time, but it certainly, it, it wasn't the most exciting like we've touched on before. Some of my favorite figures from this set, I thought the Undertaker figure was my favorite figure from this set. I think off my ranking, I believe I put it at number one. It came with a watch. It was a, you know, kind of post-retirement Undertaker figure that was really good. I love this Undertaker. I really do. Double jointed arm, shirtless. You can make it into a classic Undertaker. Even just stand alone as a current day Undertaker. I just like this figure a lot. There's something about this figure that brings me some joy and some charm to it that I like this Undertaker figure a lot. So I do have Elite 107 Taker as my favorite figure in the set. Outside of that, we do have the updated body Solo Sokoa figure, which wasn't bad, but it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't like the greatest figure of all time. This figure was also very good, an upgrade from Elite 104. I still am not big on the skinny legs and certain parts of the formula, but I will take it. I think it was a certain upgrade from the Daniel Bryan tragic torso of Elite 104, so I think that the Solo figure was pretty good. And then outside of that, I just wasn't a big fan of, of the rest of the figures. We know that I love Finn Balor, but uh, outside of the head, you know, the head sculpt was no different. It was a great jacket, great jacket, but I hate this formula. It makes him look very, very tiny, which I don't like, as you guys know. Otis was a good figure as well, just I, I don't really, I don't know, I, it doesn't move the needle a ton for me, even though I do like Otis, I like his character, I just would have preferred somebody else in the wave here. Grayson Waller, I'm not a fan of, but it was a good representation of him. And then Cora Jade, I do like the figure, I thought the head sculpt was a bit derpy, but I do like the Cora Jade figure, it was a solid figure, I like the attire, I like certain things, but it, it just wasn't enough for Elite 107 to jump over the rest of the sets, and just because, again, Elite 108 is at the bottom of the set doesn't mean that it's the worst set of all time, but it certainly wasn't my favorite, you know what I mean? Did you know that I will be selling exclusive items on Whatnot this weekend? Well, now you do. And you can tune in this Sunday, September 29th at 8 p.m. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, MDT, why the hell would I do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, I'll be giving away personal items
items from my collection as well as selling items and figures starting at auction prices as low as one dollar. Not only that, but if you go to the link in the description, download the WhatNot app, you will receive $15 free credit to spend on my live stream or any other show on the WhatNot app. If you're unaware, WhatNot is basically like Twitch and eBay combined together where you sell items while live streaming at the exact same time. But not only are there benefits as a buyer on WhatNot, you can also sell your own items from your own personal collection as well. I personally love using WhatNot to sell my own collection or pieces from my collection because you know as well as I do, it takes up a lot of space and you can make place for other interests or other figures that you want to seek out. The extra cash is always a bonus. Who doesn't love extra money, right? On top of the extra dough you'll be bringing in, you can use my link below and sign up as a seller yourself. And if you end up spending $150 worth of sales in your first seven days as a seller, WhatNot will actually match your $150, giving you $300 total as a seller. Gotta love extra money, baby. The custom championships will be back. We'll have exclusive custom WWE action figures. And who knows what other surprises will be in store. So be sure to bookmark my show coming up this Sunday and prepare for some epic items to add to your WWE action figure collection. So be sure to use my link down below, sign up for WhatNot, download the app, get your $15 off credit, and come by my show on September 29th, 8 p.m., and I will see you guys there. Moving to number four. Number four, I have Elite 110. Elite 110, Rhea Ripley, Kit Wilson, Elton Prince, Bruno San Martino, Austin Theory, Roman Reigns, and Pete Dunne. This is a set that has seven figures because they did add Bruno San Martino, who was originally going to be in the Legends Greatest Hits line. They did remove him, and it is essentially just a repaint of the Elite 25 Bruno, which is a good figure. I like the figure. I just, uh, certain things that held this set back. It wasn't the most exciting wave, you know. You do have Bruno, who's a re-release, but you don't have anything else that's a throwback release. Everything else is current day here between Pete Dunne, Roman, Rhea, Austin Theory, and I don't know, it just kind of lacks some of that flashback ability right there, obviously. Elton Prince and Kit Wilson, cool additions his first time in the lines, but not, I don't know, they're not bad figures, they're just, I don't know, they're not going to be the hottest sellers off the market, right? So there is that. You do have some superstar quality here, Roman Reigns and Rhea Ripley. The Rhea Ripley was a fantastic piece, and I really enjoy the Pete Dunne figure from the set. Both of those figures are great. The Elite 110 Roman Reigns is a good Roman Reigns, but we know the lore of the head sculpt and the beard and the face kind of held it back and it is from the neck down the exact same Roman Reigns we've seen so many times before but it's not terrible and then the Austin Theory I really like I like the head sculpt I felt like the arms could be bigger on this guy but I do love the additional torso and stuff this is certainly one of those better waves when it comes to the rest of the sets that we're ranking here today and it was very close between the number four spot and the number three spot I went back and forth on those sets very much just flipping back and forth because it was a little bit it was a little tricky because I do like Elite 110 I think that it is a quality wave I just when I stepped back it didn't completely blow me away. Like, some of the things that could have really thrown the set over the top kind of held it back. Like, Rhea Ripley's head sculpt, I think, could have been a little bit better. It's not bad by any stretch, but I think that figure could have been just a tad better. And then Roman Reigns, had it had the faded beard and things like that, maybe that figure set could have taken another step as, as well. Maybe this comes in at the number two spot or the three spot, but at this spot, it is at number four. Moving up to number three, I have Elite 112. This is the most recent set that we have on this list, and not a lot of people were excited about this wave. I, I felt like in the review, Used. Not many people were really caring about this set. It didn't really, I don't know, it just wasn't the most star-studded set of all time, but I think all the figures are very quality. I think some of the highlights of this set are going to be J.D. McCrispy. You know, J.D. McDouble is a really good figure. I think the head sculpt was good. The formula was good. Not the best attire, but it's not a bad attire. It's just a really good representation of a character, and I think that that kind of, you know, that's all you need sometimes. You know, you don't need the most over-the-top thing of all time. Sometimes you just got to check your boxes, cross your T's, dot your I's, and get the hell out of here. So I think that that was really good. I thought the Bray Wyatt, his return to the Elite line was very nice to see that figure that got canceled on two separate occasions. It got moved on two separate occasions. People waiting and waiting on that Bray Wyatt Elite. And I know it's not the most exciting Bray Wyatt Elite of all time, but I was very much looking forward to it. I like the khaki pants color. I like the boots. I like the Bray Wyatt. I don't really care for the formula, and I know it's kind of an Elite 54 repaint, but I think that the Bray Wyatt was very quality. Seth Rollins is another good figure in the set. I know that you can say what you will about the attire and another black and gold Seth, but it's still a good standalone Seth Rollins. Regardless if you agree with the attire choice, it's still a really good figure. It's a good formula. It's a good representation of the character. And, you know, I think it checks all the boxes that you need out of a Seth Rollins. So that is good. We also have Xavier Woods. Not big on the head sculpt and not big on the attire, but I think it's an okay representation. I think I like his previous figures better, but this one's not just egregious or just throw it the hell out 
out in the yard material. We also have Becky Lynch here, which I wasn't a huge fan of the head sculpt, but I did like the gear. I thought the gear was really nice. The attire was nice. Would have preferred a different attire, but I still like the attire, you know, and I can, I think that two things can remain true at once. I can like the, tie, the attire they chose while also wishing that it was a different one. So I think that's completely fine there. We also have Channing Stax Lorenzo, which is a good, I think it's a pretty good representation of him. We got that new leg sculpt. They gave him the ricochet torso, which was an interesting pull as well. I like this one. This is an underrated figure of the year, and it does have that white jacket, which was appreciated. So not the just greatest set of all time, but I think Elite 112 is holding its own here in the countdown today. Let's move up to the number two spot. For number two, I did go with Elite 111. I think this is a quality set from top to bottom. The only thing kind of hindering this set is a couple different bugaboos, which we'll get into. First of all, the Trish Stratus figure. I wasn't a big head sculpt fan here. Didn't really care for the head sculpt. We touched on it at certain angles or from far away, it looks good. And then the rest just isn't there. But I think everything else about this figure is really good. I like the cloth goods. I like the the, the body and the attire choice is nice. It's just the head sculpt kind of held me back here, which I find to be sort of a, I don't know, they either completely nail the head sculpt or they completely miss is what I found in modern day 2024 WWE action figures. But the rest of this set is pretty damn good. Say what you will about Finn Balor. I do like the gear, even though they're reusing that head sculpt. It's kind of an Elite 107 deal where it's, I just despise the formula, so it's going to be hard to really like a modern-day Finn Balor figure unless they redo the formula. They got to redo the formula. I'm just not a fan of it. I think he's way too small, and it does him a disservice there. But the rest of this set is still pretty damn quality. We get Sandman for the first time, which was a huge addition. Everybody freaking out about Sandman. I think that that's a great addition. I know they use the Shane McMahon legs with the John Cena shoes, but it is Sandman finally getting him in the line, finally getting him as an addition there. You have him as the Chase variant with the, the Rex Quando pants which is nice is always great so I you guys know I love Sandman so making him into an ultimate edition was really fun and to do that on surgery was awesome so I'm happy to add Sandman finally as an official figure can't wait for more Sandman you know what I mean I, I want more Sandman I want to see more of him made the Cody Rhodes in this set is pretty good I like the gear and the attire and everything head sculpt wasn't the greatest but at least they did give you an additional head sculpt that you could switch out there if you wanted to do so Ricochet in this set was very damn good a very damn good Ricochet figure love the attire here and I know we had Johnny Gargano syndrome, but I think that the attire and everything else about the figure really suffices, and you could easily just replace the boots with white boots or, or certain kick pads or whatever you want to do there. I think the Ricochet is so damn good, regardless of the Johnny Gargano syndrome. I just want to touch on that. The entrance vest was really cool and everything. And then we have Tony D'Angelo, which is another really cool addition to, to put up with your chaining stacks. It's just a really cool figure. I think it was well executed. I don't really care for the arms or the torso they used, but it is cool to get him in here. I liked all the cloth goods, accessories. Here. And I just thought that there was a lot of star quality in Elite 111 that really lifted it above some of these other waves. There's just so many good names here that really stand out above the rest. Not that the other waves don't have star quality as well, because they absolutely do. I just thought that when you compare the name quality or the name value with the attires and the executions and things of this wave, I thought that it was a little bit better than the rest. But the number one figure wave that I have so far is a mainline set that we have seen so far in 2024. I went with Elite Series 109. Now, if you look at this set from top to bottom, I think that you could probably agree that it is the best quality figures from across the board. I don't really see a bad figure in this set. And if you really want to break it down, the best thing or the closest thing to a, a, a nitpick that you can really find in this set for me was going to be Cody Rhodes. The suited Cody Cody Rhodes, first of all, if you step back, it's a great addition of a figure, right? Because it is Cody Rhodes in a suit. That's an, a fantastic idea for an elite, but I didn't like the choice of torso here or the parts choice. I think they should have went with a more jacked torso or the Adam Pierce body that they used for his Build-A-Figure. That would be a much better body, I think, for Cody Rhodes. Or this, the uh, Doc Hendricks Build-A-Figure body is a much better body for Cody Rhodes. That's the only nitpick I can say here, but as an idea, as an execution, it's, it's not the worst thing of all time. Cody Rhodes in a suit is a great elite figure choice. You have Seth Rollins in this wave too in the gold and black. Great execution. First time in the line. World Heavyweight Championship, which was also a great addition as well. I know he didn't come with a ton of accessories, but I think you can let it pass since we do have some other jackets you could put on the guy. Good looking Seth Rollins, even if the gold was a little inaccurate. You have Damian Priest here, which is a fantastic figure. Every single Damian Priest they've made has been fantastic, and it continued here in Elite 109. This is a great Damian Priest figure. Just a really, really solid Damian Priest figure, I'd say. Great head sculpt. I thought that everything here looks really good. He may be a little 
short, possibly, but I think that you can you can pass it. I don't think it's the most egregious detail. I think this is a, a very, very good executed Damien Priest. And on top of that, we do have a Dominic figure. So you are getting the flannel Dominic with great accessory. I love that flannel shirt. You can put that on a lot of different people. And this is possibly my favorite Elite Dominic that we've seen so far. So I do like the Elite Dominic. Even if it is very similar to the Elite 105, I thought that it's still, you know, Dominic's very popular at this moment. I think that this wave from top to bottom has a ton of star power, which is another thing as well. But we move on from Dominic. You have Bailey, which is an updated Bailey Elite that we've been waiting on for a very long time. We haven't seen a Bailey Elite figure in a long time. So getting her in there, finally getting double jointed arms and getting some accessories, and you know, you get to actually have a Bailey figure that is updated and it's modern day or more modern day. It's not completely up to date, but it is a more modern Bailey for your collection. And then the last figure in the set, which is probably the most underrated in the set, is gonna be Shinsuke Nakamura, who was the chase. He had that black and white gear. He came with a long entrance robe, great head sculpt, really good, really good elite. Shinsuke Nakamura. So I think that you add all those things up together, man, with the star power, with the executions. Elite 109 is definitely the best mainline Elite set from 2024 so far, at least to me. I think so. I, you know, I went back and forth on what should be number three and four. I think Elite 110 and 12 could have swapped possibly. You know, the more I think on it, the more I could probably switch some of these. But I think the rest of the set, I would say that Elite 109 is definitely the best set and Elite 108 is definitely the worst set that we've seen. But, you know, we do have Elite 113 coming. And I think Elite 113, God, dude, if they didn't mess up Tiffany Stratton, Elite 113 would probably be the best way. But I wanted to get on here and touch on this. I think that, you know, I love ranking videos, and it doesn't seem that a lot of people really enjoy the other ranking videos. You can let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think. Do you think that the other ranking videos are any good in terms of the, you know, the taking certain superstars and ranking them? It just kind of seemed like people started to not really care about it as much. So I don't know. You can let me know all those things down below. But again, man, be sure to hit the link in the description for the Whatnot stream coming up this Sunday. I hope you guys do come by. It's always fun. We always have a lot of stuff up for sale. I do have some custom titles and different things. We're going to be doing some giveaways and stuff, and it's always a great time, man. So I greatly appreciate it. But before we get out of here, huge shout out to our Patreon members. Thank you guys so very much for your support as well. Always a great time for you guys, and I just greatly appreciate your support as always, man. But I am getting the hell out. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me all your thoughts down below. I will see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.